time. I think very deeply. Yo, yo, check it out. Shall we back in the building? Crazy Bone and the Bum Keith G. And y'all are tuned in live on the Quick Fix on TRadioV.com. You know what I'm saying? We had the uh, we had the homies Houdini in the building. You know what I'm saying? If y'all missed that, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can go back and check out the the video on T. Uh, Shouts out to Jalil on T Radio V Ecstasy dot com. So you know what I'm saying? Like I mentioned to y'all earlier, we got like a real hip hop icon, legendary dude, teacher. You know what I'm saying? Like a dude that 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 was another one of my heavy influences on the line right now. You know what I'm saying? Goes by the name of KRS One. What's yeah. up, Blast, bro? Blastmaster. Yes. What's Indeed. Go- hey, bro, bro. First of all, I I I, I just want to say this with everybody, bro. I think like one of the first times I met you, bro, we was in New York for like I think this was like our second, third time in New York. Like this is for when we first came out, and, mm. and somebody asked us, they was like, uh, you know, KRS, and um, I think Buster was over there, and y'all was rocking at the, at some club, and they was like, y'all want to go check them out? We was like, hell yeah! So look, we go to the show, mm. we on the side of the stage, bro. You know, and uh, you know, you get to breaking it down. You like, you like, Buster Rhymes is hip hop, Boogie Down Productions is hip hop, and then you look over at us and you was like, Bone Thugs in Harmony, damn, bruh, is hip hop. Oh, hey, bruh, <laughs> that hey, that certified me right there. <laughs> I ain't give a damn what nobody else said. I say, KRS One certified me. He said I'm hip hop to hell with all y'all for real. That's real. That's what's up, bro. Mm. How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling good, and that still stands in 2014 for real. Right. Man, that's love. That's love, bro. So, bro, I'm a, I'm gonna let you know, bro. I'm a, I'm a crazy fan, bro. You was, you was one of those artists like before, like before I started rapping, that I actually took the time out to write the lyrics down to one of your songs. And the first song that I wrote, uh, that I had wrote down of yours, was the song "You Slipping." Hmm. That, uh, bro, that shit was so crazy to me, bro. Like you said, you said so much like real stuff in that song, bro. I was just like, I mean, bro, like to me, <laughs> to me, like you was an MC. Like to me, everything you said back then can pertain to what's going on right in the game now. today. Mm. No lie. So like, mm. I, I always tell people, I'll be like, man, listen to this dude's flow. Listen to what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, like, bro, and and I got a chance, you know, because I was working with Dwayne The Rock. You know, I got a chance to like to hear some of the stuff that she was working on, like the new stuff. I was like, yo, this dude will probably kill anybody that's trying to go against him still today. <laughs> he been told I'm him don't mess you, with Chris. Ben told him. Hey, bro, so, 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 bro, I just wanted to say that, man, because I've been waiting a long time to say that. It's crazy how I ran into you in the store. I was like, <laughs> running into my dude at the store. I'm in there buying t shirts and socks. I look over, I say, yo, I know this ain't KRS. What up in here, man? <laughs> Bro, so bro, bro, I just want to um, welcome you to the show, bro. And the reason I wanted you on the show is because when we first start talking about this topic, like I told you, mm-hmm. it's like I told my dudes, I was like, "Yo, we got to get KRS One in here." Gotta have him. So, so, so when I saw you in the store, I was I called my dude and I was like, "Yo, bro, this is meant to this is meant to happen, bro." I just ran into this. Yeah, dude even guess who I ran into? I'm in like, the who? store, I'm like, "Bro, this is this 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 is meant to happen, bro." So I definitely got to get your input. We just gonna jump straight to it. I want to get. And then, then we can go. We can go back to everything else later. Yeah. I want to get your input on what you think, the, how, how you feel about the state of hip hop today. Let's get right to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. Yeah, I already know. There you go. Well, <laughs> I hope you're recording this. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, definitely, um, definitely. It, it, this, let, let's go right into. And, and let me also say that. Um, you know, I, I have to do this uh, interview. I, I had when I saw you there in the store. I, I definitely knew that this was this. Was, see, the universe is exact. Mm-hmm. Uh, nature is a closed system, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. everything that's going on is exact, and it, and there's a higher intelligence involved in that. And to see you there, I'm I'm going there to get a pair of jeans and shit. Yeah. You know the same old deal is yeah. there, <laughs> and I'm like, and there you are, and 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 it's interesting because. There's a lot going on with hip hop this year, as a matter of fact. Yes. Um, last year, hip hop turned 40. Yes. Uh, from 73 to 2003, completes our first 40 years. Yes. And when you turn 40, usually that's when your spiritual 
uh, self opens up. That's when your mental, your your mentality, your intelligence. Mm-hmm. This is why they say some of the prophets went away for forty days, forty exactly. nights. Exactly. Moses was up in the mountain for forty days. Forty is like a like a, a, a symbolic number for reaching a certain degree of, of spiritual maturity. So hip hop at forty uh, is is huge, and and we knew this going in. Now to meet you that day was just amazing. It, it everything just lines up, and here's why now because whoever is on the other end of this conversation of hearing us. Uh, talk is probably the ones who really need to hear this right now. Exactly. Um, state of hip hop. Now understand that we we got you know we're, we're having a scholarly conversation. So let me just put some terms on it. Uh, hip hop. Hip hop is the culture that rap music comes out of. Hip hop uh, consists of breaking or break dancing, MCing or rap. Graffiti writing, uh, tagging, bombing, burning, piecing, mm-hmm. uh, DJing, cutting, mixing, scratching, uh, beatboxing, uh, making music with your body, and so on. Then we got our own fashion, street fashion, our own body of knowledge, street knowledge, mm-hmm. uh, our own language. They call it Ebonics exactly. or Black English <laughs> or Hip Hop or whatever. Uh, we have that. So, and then of course our own trade techniques, our own street entrepreneurialism. So, when we talk about hip hop. We talk about the culture, the group of people that see the world a certain way and then rap about it. Uh, The issue is, what is it that causes you to rap? What makes you rap? Why, why, Why are you rapping? So the original point, the original point of rap was to express the ideas of your community. Uh, The original idea was... I'm going to get out here and I'm going to say some stuff that my particular block understands, my neighborhood understands. Uh, and that could be any topic, uh, you know, just anything. But my my people understand what it is I'm saying out my mouth. Now, having said that, mm-hmm. when we say, what is the state of hip-hop? Well, hip-hop is doing well. Hip-hop as a culture is phenomenal. In a few minutes, we're going to have our own land and our own city. Exactly. <laughs> Hip-hop is, is doing wonderful. Breaking is huge all over the world. MCing, huge all over DJ. Yep. In fact, DJs have now become like, like this is like a professional job now. This is yes. no longer an uh, entertainment pastime. This is like, you, like you, you know, you, you, you you can raise a family on DJing. You can further your education through DJing. Send yourself or your children to school through DJing. This is not just a guy on the turntable playing some music we like. This is a new job. This is a new occupation in the world. So DJing, MCing, graffiti writing, uh, all of that stuff is is now... Uh, what's feeding an entire group of people. So when we say hip-hop, hip-hop's doing well. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop is is out of control. Now, Hmm. rap music might have a little issue. (laughs) Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Rap is going through a phase where every 10 years, uh, rap changes. Uh, Really... Hip hop as a culture goes through the change, but it's rap that really is is the voice of it. The, you know, rap is the mouth of hip hop. It's 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 the mouth of it. So it's like back in the day. Let's let's start from seventy three. Cool Herc, Cool DJ Herc, nineteen seventy three, August eleventh, Bronx, New York, at a place called fifteen twenty Sedgwick Avenue, mm-hmm. in the Bronx. At approximately nine o'clock, he mm-hmm. comes out with his turntables. Mm-hmm. And he starts playing James Brown, the breaks of James Brown. And little dudes like me, I I used to live across the street from Cool Herc in 73. And so little dudes like me would come outside and hear Cool Herc playing this music that he called the merry-go-round. And he would just play the breaks of the music, and that's it. And, And we would all do what we call the go-off, uh, which was ne- which is now called breakdancing, or b- b-boying is what we called it, breaking is what we called it. Uh, but then, back then, it was called the go-off. Uh, and we used to do that. And I mentioned, I just put that little piece of history in because mm-hmm. most of what 
rap music does is a contradiction to what it was. And we see this. This is the progression of of really hip-hop as culture through rap, is that none of us are doing Cool Herc's hip-hop. None of us are doing Africa Bambada's hip-hop. In fact, Cool Herc's hip-hop was replaced by Africa Bambada's hip-hop. Africa Bambada's style of hip-hop was replaced by uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Sugar Hill era Mm -hmm. style of hip-hop. Uh, Flash was replaced by Run DMC's mm-hmm. and LL Cool J basically Def Jam's style of hip hop. Yeah. Uh, that was replaced by people like me, Eric B. Rakim, Juice Crew, yeah. uh, Salt and Pepper, um, Heavy D, Rest His Soul, yeah. um, like that. And then that was replaced uh, by the West Coast came up with NWA. I, actually, it was a uh, two short. Uh, that really kicked it off as far as, as the East Coast was concerned because we were getting two short tapes. Yeah. He was making tapes in Oakland. We was getting them. Yeah. And um, that's when we first started hearing, wow, dudes are spitting on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, then NWA just broke it out. And, and then from there, uh, the whole West Coast was replaced by the South, meaning Atlanta started to blow uh, South, you know, MCs from the South started bringing their style, and and this is the culture is expanding on this. But each time, each time we take a step, we kind of do it differently <laughs> than yeah. we yeah. did it before. Mm-hmm. And this is good. This is not bad. Mm-hmm. It's good. But what's bad is when you forget the other styles, yes. uh, when you forget the progression that, that you're standing upon, now your foundation becomes weak. And this is what a lot of rappers are going through today. Um, not, not all, because I, I must say that a lot of people today that are younger than me you know, people in their 30s, people in their 20s, uh, uh, even, you know, 35 even, they know the deal. Mo- most people today, they know what the real is. Uh, it is straight up and down. But right. there are those who are desperate, and that's the best word I could use, mm-hmm. is desperate. And it's like either you're desperate for fame, you're desperate for money, you're desperate for some sort of recognition. Mm-hmm. You may have a burning desire in your own heart to get something completed, whatever it is, you're, you, you, most rappers are entering the game desperately. I need this money, man. I need this. I need to get recognized. I, I, you know, right. they're not entering the game as scholars, as people who say, you know what, I'm going to choose to say this, or I'm going to choose to use this beat, or choose to use these, this chorus line. Most people are just saying, you know, look, if I could say the last thing. Uh, Whoever the hottest guy was last time, uh, if, if, if you know, if, if Jay Z says something, you know, spectacular, I'm just going to mimic Jay Z. Uh, if Lil Wayne says something spectacular, I'm just going to mimic Lil Wayne. If Lil, K, you know, and it goes on and on. Right, yeah. And this is where rappers are today. They're only like they're, they're very surface, and and it's and it's sad because for someone like me, for instance, who Occasionally, I may get into an MC battle here or there, <laughs> uh, and most of the time, it's out of fun, um, you know. But but the people that say, "Yo, Chris, I want a battle," you know, it's the, the, immediately if I start with the history of the culture and how they arrived at the very spot that they're talking to me on, they lost the battle. Right. They 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 can't exactly. relate to. You know the '80s, the '90s. Um, they don't. They they don't know about old DB. You know, in Brooklyn Zoo, they don't know. Or they may know Method Man. They may be familiar with, you know, even Ghostface or somebody. But but ODB, you're not really. You know, you really don't know RZA either. You know, you really don't. You know, you, you're yelling Wu Tang, but you really don't know Protect Your Neck. Uh, you know, yeah, from Method exactly. Man. You just don't. So it's like. It's, 
it's, it's like a hollow MC. It's like, I, I could say, yeah, I'm the dopest like Method Man. Right. But yeah. you really don't know Method Man. You don't know Wu-Tang. You don't know the 36 Chambers. You're not exactly. really into, you know, what they're into. And this is what makes rappers weak today. Karis One, can you do us a favor and stay with us while we pay some bills real quick? Two minutes. Come on, let's do that. Two minutes. We'll be we right back, y'all. Y'all tuned into the Quick Fix. We getting some real knowledge in with the Blast Master himself. Y'all better listen to what he's saying, man. Crazy Bone. Because bum. this is hip hop. Bottom line. We'll be Period. right back. Bum Keith G, KRS One, baby. This is the cut right here. All right, now here we go. I want you all to understand I'm down with BDP. I got so many stars, but I'm not an MC. I am a teacher, teacher rap, and of course I am back. Because these other, other MCs out here are so wicked rap. <laughs> so BDP will teach them, hey, we will teach them. BDP hey, yo, but hey, hey, we back in the oh, building. It's the quick fix, man. You know what I'm saying? I love, yeah. hey. I'm having a good time because this is what I came up off of. You, man, you know what I'm saying? Like this is this is this is the hip hop that inspired me, bro. We got KRS one on the lines, Dr. y'all. Blastmaster, baby. What's up? You still there, man? Yeah, man. <laughs> Checking yeah. this out. Hey, check it out, y'all. We in the we in the building. So look, bro, bro, you 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 was on such a good one. We hey, I'm just gonna say pick up where you Please left off. Please pick up from where pick you up, left bro, off. Because I'm because I'm here with my notebook and pad. Like, okay, I'm taking notes, baby. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. Let's go with it. <laughs> You know when 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 we um that, when, well I'll put a period on 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 this last point about desperate MCs. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that when you say the state of hip hop, we were talking about the state of hip hop. Yeah. My personal opinion about it, and my personal opinion in a nutshell is that hip hop as a culture it moves through rap music. Rap is is the mouth of the culture, and rap. Is the or should I say rappers mm. are in a kind of a desperate state right now because they're not clear about what their history is. They don't know the fights that that that, that were won. Now this is not their fault. Exactly. Uh, p- you right. know, part of it is like you can always seek knowledge. You can always you know you can go on the internet. You can always go get a book. You can always watch Wild Style, no doubt. Mm. But it's still not their fault. It's the fault of all of those that claim to be conscious rappers. Mm-hmm. This is the fault of us. Is and, and this is why it is this particular conversation is so useful and, and kind of exonerates us uh, from the uh, from actually uh, being part of the, the guilty party here. Mm-hmm. When 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 you say you're a conscious MC, this is this is a lot different from saying I you know straight up I'm a gangster rapper. Mm-hmm. And you say look I'm straight up gangster. I'm I'm talking that shit. This is what I'm about. I'm this is where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Then we know this is where you at. Matter of fact, I, I need some of that sometime. I, I need to pop that in in, in right. the car sometime and sit exactly. back. Exactly. I need that. Uh, no doubt. But then those that claim to be teachers, scholars, street scholars, uh, those who hold out the image of being concerned about their people, concerned about hip hop as a culture, they 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 see people like me, they see people like uh like uh most deaf, they see uh, uh Talib Kweli, mm-hmm. they see uh, uh, immortal technique. Uh, they may see, you know, all these different kind of guys. They'll pass them up, though. Mm-hmm. Um, even me, uh, you know, yeah. you know, you saw me in the store and and gave me the opportunity to even come on your show and and speak. Nobody's really calling us like that mm. to come and speak on the shows. Now, who are, now the people that are calling us is Harvard University, uh, mm. Yale University, UCLA, yes. Yes. Um, Stanford. They're always calling us yes. to speak, to give up the knowledge mm-hmm. so that they can make money on it mm. at the university. Of course, I refuse. But exactly. That's right. uh, this is, this is the, the dilemma that we're in is that those that know the true knowledge are not speaking it because they want to be compatible with those that don't know. Because the ones that don't know are the ones that's making the money. 
Yes. And the reason they're making the money is because they don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, if you don't know really that MTV hates you and does not want your kind on their show, if you know that, you would never, you'd be like, I could care less if y'all, you know, call me or don't call me. Uh-huh. If you knew that BET has it in for black people, like if you know this, that they were bought by Viacom for the specific reason of not competing with VH1 and with MTV. BET was kicking MTV in their ass, kicking VH. They, they, these people had no more shows when Rap City first came on the air. And we used to have Yo MTV Raps. They tried to do Yo MTV Raps, but Yo MTV Raps had a radical producer named Ted Demi. Rest his soul, he passed now. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ted Demi, he used to, they didn't want Public Enemy on Yo MTV Raps or mm-hmm. KRS. Well, they didn't want none of that. Yeah. But he put us on anyway. Wow. And and then of course, when the show was at, at its peak, they canceled it. Just outright MTV mm-hmm. canceled it. So Viacom already set up BET to belittle not only black people, period, but to just belittle hip-hop. To be, and it's specific. I mean, I, I'm not going to go into the meetings that I personally had with their executives and, and so on, where we had huge arguments uh, over this very thing. But their point was, we are a corporation and we have to survive. Basically, F the culture. We're going to basically exploit the culture. And that's when they sold BET to Viacom for about three, four billion dollars, cashed out. These are black people, by the way, selling out blacks. Uh, cashed out and went ahead and did that. Now, if you know that history and BET calls you up for 106 in Park, you kind of, you could do it. Of course, nobody's saying don't go on the show. You got a new album, you want to promote it or whatever, right. book or whatever, go on the show. But go with this knowledge. Go with the knowledge of these people could care less about you and your career. They're using you and they're exploiting you. Now, if you know that, That's you true. walk in sort of with a condom on. It's, it's, it's sort of like <laughs> there's a famous professor, a uh, guy named Professor Z, teaches at um, Lincoln University. He said... Um, and in Pennsylvania, he, in Philadelphia, sorry, well, same thing. Uh, he said, um, when, when, having, when having intercourse with corporate America, use your culture as a condom, and you'll be safe. And I always stayed with that, to use your culture as the condom when, when going into corporate America. And most of our rappers don't have that protection. So they get in there. And they think they're strong, they think they're smart, and most of them are. But when you get in there, you find there's another game going on, there's a whole different thing going on, and you're signing contracts, and you're trying to stay afloat, and after a while you realize that you're never going to be in the position to make your own decisions about your own career as long as you want to be on MTV, BET, or whatever the popular radio station is, or you want a Grammy Award or an Oscar or whatever it is, whatever you want from the mainstream, you have to kind of give up your soul to get it. You kind of have to betray your ancestors to get it. You got to kind of forget about hip-hop in a way to actually get one of these these, uh, validations uh, from the mainstream. And keep in mind, let me also say, this is not in any way racial or cultural. Everybody's involved in this. Uh, ex- exploitation is is multiracial. <laughs> this yes. is black folk, white folk, Asians, Latinos, Arabs. Everybody is exploiting hip-hop. Everybody. KRS, it, let me ask you this real quick. Not even this uh, interruption. Excuse me. How, yes, did, how, how did you... Because you're so profound, how did you get to the point where you cared and, and that you took your microphone seriously, realized it was a blessing from God, realized that it was a voice of the people that needed to speak? How did you how did you embody that type of situation and keep it and hold it? You know what I'm saying? And use it like this. You know, I, I you know, not to sound corny here, but I'll just be truthful. I tell you, I listen to rap. Um I, I hear the cries. Uh, I mean a, a, a very popular group, I would call them a hip-hop group as opposed to a rap group, a, a very popular hip-hop group once said, um, what you gonna do when there ain't nowhere to run or hide? 
when judgment comes for you, because <laughs> it's going to come for you. Right, right. right. That's real. And this group uh, put out a video with a black dude in a black uh, trench coat yeah. and playing the role of death, <laughs> walking around touching people. <laughs> now, I thought that was the most brilliant video of all time, if you ask me, a hip hop mm. historian. Mm, I would put that that video right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Man, that's love. That's now, that. if you listen to the lyrics of just that one song, right? How can you then turn around? <laughs> and do the complete yeah, opposite. Right, right, right. For me, say that again. No, I say I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying right. That's right. Absolutely. You know how could you how could you hear that? Uh, that that's one part. Okay, that's one piece. Here's another piece that I really appreciate my brothers and my sisters. I know that may sound corny too. I no, people don't, don't talk like this, but. I, you know, to be honest with you completely, you know, I really love my people. I, I And when I say my people, I mean just anybody in the hip-hop, right, you know. Yes. It just You in the hip-hop, you in the me. You, you know, we, we agree. We are on the same wavelength here. And so when I look at us and I say, you know, there's a lot of people hanging on our words. There's a lot of people hanging on our image. Mm -hmm. You know, we build a lot of people up, but we can also tear a lot of people down. Yes. Um, you know, so let's be responsible at least about yes. what we're doing. So that's the second piece. The last piece has to do with, I guess, in a lot of ways I was born this way because mm -hmm. Ever since I was little, like, you know, I mean, like five and six years old, first of all, I grew up with Cool Herc. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a member of Zulu Nation, been down with them from the beginning. Uh, Grandmaster Flash, I mean, that's, 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 my, that's my DJ, <laughs> basically. It's everyone's <laughs> DJ, but Grandmaster Flash, um, right there. I mean, I battled Melly Mel back in Latin quarters, and, you know, it was an honor for me, actually, with some other craziness there with Melly Mel and, you know, Latin quarters. And so, for me, it's like, I have no choice. I'm not trying to be this way. It's just the way I grew up. It's 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 the experiences I had. You know, they shot Tupac, Biggie, uh, my DJ Scott LaRock was mm. killed in the street. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know. People people don't have these experiences, and this is why. I don't blame nobody. You can't point fingers at people say, oh, you're not real hip-hop, right, you know. Yeah. But you could definitely point and say, you are real hip-hop. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can't say, well, that's the real right there. Oh, yeah. Why is it the real? Because it's hitting my soul right now. This is, this is, this is beyond how much we make in. This is beyond, you know, whether I'm on the cover of some magazine. The man just said, blah, 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 blah. And that blah, blah, blah hit my soul so hard mm -hmm. that I, he, he recognized me in his words. And now I, I you know, I, I can recognize myself through his words. And that's called culture. And for me, that's where I stand. I don't, I don't move from that. That's been my salvation from day one. Uh, you know, I, I seen what Cool Herc went through as well. You know, going to jail, living street life struggling with drugs. I seen what, what Africa Bambada went through as well, trying to organize early hip hop with a bunch of literal gangsters uh at the time trying to get the gangs to stop all of that. Uh you look at Grandmaster Flash getting totally ripped off. I mean just beyond anything we can imagine. Mm. Uh just ripped off for like I mean imagine having the first M C like Today we all MCs. Today there's like a thousand. There's probably a million MCs. Mm -hmm. th th more than that, probably in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a time when there was like only five MCs on the whole planet, <laughs> and like one of them was this guy named Keith Cowboy from from the Furious Five, yes, and man. Keith Cowboy was Grandmaster Flash's first uh, MC. Keith Cowboy is where we get say ho and throw your hands in the air. Yep. He invented yeah, yeah. that stuff. Exactly. I mean, imagine, you know, this dude invented that. And so I grew up with them, you know, and, I, you know, when they said, yo, Chris, keep it real, you know, I, for me, I take it to heart. When Flash right. speaks, 
I take it to heart. When Bam is speaking, I take it to heart. You know, when when others, I mean, Jam Master J speaking from the grave even, you know. Mm-hmm. You take these things from the heart too, Pac. And, you know, I, I'm into that stuff too in terms of mediumship and talking to the dead and ancestors. I'm definitely with that. And, you know, and so I say that, I just put that little piece in <laughs> only to say <laughs> that, when you have these experiences, you can't help but hold the culture down. You can't help, like, you know, there's no amount of money. I can't be bought. I, I, it's impossible. I die first. Mm-hmm. And so this is why, you know, you're not hearing much of KRS on radio, television, you know, this kind of thing. Because I refuse. You know, I get calls all the time, be in this movie, come on this television show, be here. And I say, of course, with, with respect, you know, thank you. I appreciate it totally. But it's just not me. I can't go there or, you know, I can't be the spokesperson for this or for that or for this brand or whatever because my people are more, it's, you know, they're more important to me than than this. My my reputation, even respect, even is is just more important. And that's not to say that I haven't you know done some things that the people didn't like. Uh, you know, and that's mm-hmm. what I learned from. I mean, when when PM Dawn got thrown off the stage, people didn't <laughs> like it. I mean, they, they didn't like it. People. I mean, today we look. We you know, it's, I guess it's part of hip hop's uh, legendary history now, but. But when it happened, man, I was people was done with KRS. It was like, yo, forget him. Uh, you know, that kind of savagery we cannot have, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so I chilled out. I, you know, I kind of chilled because my own people, you know, not not these weirdos that are judging hip-hop, not them, not, not like journalists and ex- executives, not them. The core of the community, like, bam, came to me and was like, yo, Chris, uh, come on. You know, and I was like, but, but, ma'am, but he, but they, nah, nah, nobody, they didn't want to hear nothing. And so I had to straighten myself up and, and apologize even to PM Dawn and try to live my life in a certain way. A, a, another way was um, uh, Nike. I did a Nike commercial. Um, I was one of the first ones to do a Nike commercial. Me and MC, uh, no, me and MC Sham was doing Sprite. Me and Chuck D did, uh, uh, Nike, and uh, when I did the Nike commercial, a a lot of, you know, the so-called black intelligentsia came down, oh, Chris, you're selling out, Nike is sweatshops (laughs) in in China, and, you know, ah, yeah, yeah, and of course, I don't agree with none of that, but my people spoke, and so when they speak, let me get in line. Let me come on over and get in line. And and that's a sort of a discipline. It's like you can have your view. You can always have your view. But the people are kind of the gauge and the measurement for how much of your view you can express. Uh, uh, and it's not censorship. It's, it's more of a, of a level of who do you respect? I mean, who, who do you care about? Uh, if, if, the, if, if your son or your daughter says, Dad, I don't understand what you're doing. You wouldn't keep doing it and making your children afraid or, you know, whatever. You know, say you in the car and you just driving recklessly. Just like, you and you know I can control the car. I'm just, I do this all the time. But your kid is in the back screaming. You know, yo, Dad, are we going to die? You know, that's more abusive to the child. So in, in that kind of symbolic way I kind of look at the culture of hip hop in that way and I say I know how to drive the car I may you know want to throw somebody off the stage or roll on a few dudes no mm-hmm. doubt yeah, exactly. but but my culture would say no nah, Chris you're contradicting yourself you came out with stop the violence we kind of need you to be over there uh, we know you did criminal minded we know it, but we don't we, we we respect it but we really want stop the violence we really want self destruction we really really want you must learn and yes, sir. this kind of thing you know so so i so i'm put in check I, I stay in check and and so and it's worked for me i that's what i guess i'm saying is that it, it has worked it, it's worked I'm, I'm coming up on a 30-year career yeah. uh it, it's it's worked bro 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 that's dope and, and bro i'm i'm gonna just you know, so I'm gonna just say like, bro, like, like we running out of time right now. But like, this is this is one class or session 
that I wish the bell One. never rung. You know what I'm saying, dog? Because I'm like, <laughs> this is this is, bro. This is some stuff like that I'm getting. I'm like, yo, I, 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 I'm trying to write stuff down so I can go tell people the same stuff. Like I'm misspelling stuff, and, trying to and, write down. And KRS One said, yeah, this is what he said. Hey, bro, but 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 but, bro, check it out. You know, like I said, bro, we we run out of time, bro. But let me tell you something, bro. Whenever you are back in California, bro, we need mm-hmm. to have you come through here, bro, and like sit down with us because like we can do, we need to make the whole show. It's just about of, of of all the knowledge and experience that you have, bro. Because I would yeah. love to keep hearing it, bro. Because it's like it would help me in what and what um I'm I'm trying to like teach people. You know what I'm saying? Like because yes, I no get doubt. these questions all the time, bro. Like so when you ever, whenever you back here, bro, we would appreciate it if you came in here and sat down with us and we took some more time. And just get right down to it, bro. You we gonna get saying? some lunch with him, crazy, when he come exactly. back out here. That's what we gonna do. Then he gonna come up to the show. You with that, Chris? Yeah. You with that? You know, I, we we definitely have have to do that. This is just the beginning, and yes. and you have my full commitment. Yes. This is we we should maybe plan say. I don't know, maybe February for, I don't know, I'm just saying that, for Black History Month, yes. Yes. that we, we come on every week. Yes, um, bro. You know, it's just, just for that month, just every week. Bro, definitely, definitely. That sounds like a, bro, that's that sounds like a plan with me, and that's, it. That's, what, that's what I'm thinking. That's what we need to do, man, because just like I just said, like, I feel like the voices of hip-hop, where it came from, I feel like everybody, all the top voices need to come together, and we need to take what we created back in our in, in into our control and educate yeah. the youngsters. Educate. Yeah. Educate the youngsters on what it is to really be a part of hip hop and learn the culture, learn where it came from because it's more than just music. It's a culture. Yep. It's like yep. you said, bro. So bro, like I said, I think I gave you I I, I sent you my uh my 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 contact info, bro. Let's Yep, I got everything. Let's really make sure we stay in contact, bro, so we can like just start like building on this, bro. And just like definitely bring you back bro we love you out here man i'm I'm on you right now as a matter of fact uh check your email because i'm gonna send you about 40 pages of history that's dope uh i'm I'm gonna send you some written stuff just to take a look uh when 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 you said um you had your book out you had your your book out i just saw the scholarship in you i just saw you shining with the scholarship i was like okay yes this dude you know (laughs) <laughs> definitely, definitely, bro. Taking notes. Trust me, I'm taking notes That's from the right. best, baby. You already know. I'm gonna send you. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna send you this piece. Um, uh, it's about forty pages. I'm, I'm gonna send it to you. Just check it out. Okay. Uh, uh, it'll definitely speed you up, bring you right up to up up to date. But I tell you the truth, man. This is intellectual knowledge. This is like us talking like this history and all that is intellectual. But you already have the spirit. Mm-hmm. You have it. I, I, you have it. You, the, the mere fact that we're talking like this, you're taking time out, mm-hmm. running over time. You know, this. you have the spirit. You don't have to know anything about hip-hop if you already have the spirit. Yeah. That's the, the ultimate right there. It's like sometimes we study ourselves out of our spirit. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you already have it. You, 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 you guys are already enlightened. And just keep that enlightenment. Keep that soul burning for the culture. Yeah. And, and that's it. I mean, because you, in soul, you'll come up with knowledge that even I don't even have. And you already, you're already lit up. You have the soul. You already have it. So if you just dig a little deeper mm-hmm. into into you and your c- contributions to hip hop and what what you are about in that way, you're gonna add knowledge to even what I'm speaking about. You, you're gonna add knowledge uh, uh, to the culture itself. And this is what it is. Every every major hip hopper, not rapper, but people like yourself. Uh, selves, mm-hmm. uh, people like you know Nas, even or you know those who really write and, and got some poetry on on you know really spit. Um, we should be writing books. We exactly. should be doing DVDs or put a CD out of just spoken word. If you just told the story of your life, or you know just um, whoever I'm speaking to, mm-hmm. but it, it, you know if if everyone in the room you're in now, I should say. <laughs> Yeah. If everyone would just 
do a quick book or a quick CD on their life experience. Like, how did you come? How did you come up? Well, here's what happened. Uh, here's my par- my parental situation. I had a father. I didn't have a father. I had a mother. Didn't have a mother. Had a grandmother. Didn't have a grandma. Oh, I went to this school. I didn't go to school. I dropped out of school. I went to this college. That that knowledge is so so valuable yeah. to the future. Exactly. Not so much the intellectual stuff, which I'm going to dump on you right when I get off this phone. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just dump a whole bunch of stuff on your head. Oh, but yeah. that stuff is nowhere near in comparison to your life story. Your life story is hip-hop itself. That That's what it is. How you came up. How did you get your first deal? How did you arrive? What were some of the downsides? What's some of the upsides? That right there, dude, that's going to save our kids. That's real. You know, we love you, Chris. You know what I'm saying? We that's thank what you for it your is, knowledge, y'all. bro. I hope everybody was listening tonight, you know what I'm saying, to the legendary KRS One kicking a lot of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? We will have him back on the show. In February, every in, week, like he said. In February, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we out of time right now. We thank everybody for stopping by tonight. Houdini. Shout out to Houdini. Shout out to the Blastmaster KRS One himself, you know what I'm saying? And y'all just watch what we do. Hip hop ain't going nowhere. We in the building, y'all. Much love. Thanks y'all for tuning in. I'm Crazy Bomb. I'm the Bum Keith G. Yeah, and this is the Quick Fix Show. We love y'all. Blast Master!